here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today I'm going to be showing you how I made my granny square cardigan. It's such a fun cardigan in the wildest craziest colors and I think it goes together. Now the thing is I made this cardigan a few years ago and I used cotton that I just found at a craft fair. Of course this was before we started our web shop and this cardigan has been in my wardrobe for the last few years and my husband has said to me you really need to publish that cardigan but then I've replied well the thing is we don't have that cotton. But of course now we do, we have King Cole Cotton Soft, a really lovely cotton to work with and a really lovely cotton to wear. I have chosen 10 of the King Cole cottons and I have made this tutorial for you. Now you will see that I filmed some of this using the cotton that obviously I used for my cardigan, but I didn't know what to do back then. I was just filming it to make sure I had some footage before I used up all my cotton. So you will see that some of it is the cotton that I used, but I have now added the missing pieces with the cotton that you will be using. So we have made a pack. You will find all the instructions in this video for you to make this cardigan. So I made 81 granny squares of three rounds. The fourth round is the joining round. So we don't do that one until we are ready to join. I am going to assume that you know how to make a granny square. So I started with making the centers as you have 10 colors. I would suggest making eight centers of each color. This will give you a good start and then you'll just have to make one extra and your triangles and your half squares. And then you put your second round on there, again mixing up all the colours. And then of course you add the third round. And of course, before I actually knew how many squares I would need, I was laying them out on a cardigan that I already wear. And that is always a good idea just to give yourself an idea of how many squares you have to make for the size of garment that you usually wear. So as you can see here, I was a long way off making all my squares, but at least this gave me an idea of how much more I had to make. So here I am much further ahead and I had made lots and lots of squares already. So let me show you how to join the squares. So when you're ready to start joining, you're going to take your first square and you're going to do another whole round because of course you don't have anything to join that one to just yet. So let's do a whole round. And I have chosen my colors quite randomly just making sure I wasn't repeating a color in the square and also making sure I'm not putting the same color next to each other. But other than that, it was just like blind dip, really. Of course, I made lovely color combinations uh, like this one here. That's quite a nice one. But yeah, I let my imagination run wild. Of course, feel free to use whatever colors you want to. If you want to tone it down and do it in one color, or if you want to um, have all pastels or neutral tones, you know, completely up to you. But 10 balls of the Cotton Soft will give you plenty of yarn to play with. And of course, you will be making 81 squares. You will be making four half squares and two triangles so keep watching for the pattern of those half squares of course and the triangles as well there we go so i have now made one whole square 
and all my other squares are three rounds. So now you take your color for the next round of your next square and I'm going to make my slip knot as usual. I'm going to get started as usual. And I'm going to do two sides. Now, of course, wherever your squares are going to be touching, those are the sides that will be joined. So, for instance, let's put it this way. I'm going to do these sides and then here, this is where we are joining. So this is where we're going to use the joining technique. Of course, if your squares are joining on two sides where you are in the second row, then you will need to do this joining technique along two sides. OK, and so we will be joining each time in between the clusters. OK, so this is the side we are going to join. Make sure everything is always facing up in this case. And now we are doing half a corner. So half a corner, that means you do the three double crochets and then we have two chains in our corner. So we are going to do just the one chain. OK, so just the one chain. Then you go to the other square, you go into the corner chain space, you bring back the yarn. So what I tend to do is I go in and then I sort of wrap the yarn around like this. So I'm sure that when I pull up my hook, it's going to follow. And then I do a chain. Then I do another chain because that's the start of my second part of my corner. Now make sure things don't twirl around here. And now you're going to continue doing your corner on your square that you were working on. Then once you've finished that, you're going to go to the other square and again, wrap your yarn around, bring it up and do a chain. Then continue your round on the square that you're working on. So each time we've done a cluster, we are going to go over to the adjacent square, wrap the yarn around, bring it up and we do a chain. And this way we are linking the squares together. And then you continue working on the square. When you have here the corner, once again, you do half a corner and you go to the corner. Now, if you have more squares meeting here, I often go into that other square, so the diagonal one. But of course, here I can't do that yet because I haven't got that yet. Then you do your chain and you start doing your three double crochets for the rest of your corner. And of course, now these two have been connected and here I don't have anything um, to connect to. So I'm just going to continue my round because that needs to be finished as well. And of course, if you have something there, then just continue joining the way I have shown you by going across to the previous square to the adjacent square and doing a chain. So now we have joined these squares and let me show you how to go about making the back panel. So to start with for the back of your cardigan you will need to make a panel of five by five squares. Now for the front panels you will need 12 squares for each panel but you will also need two half squares for each panel. So let me show you how to do the half square. So let's get started by doing a slip knot, insert your hook, and then we are going to do a chain for one, two, three, and four. Go back to the first chain, insert your hook, and we are going to do a slip stitch to make a little circle. Then we chain two, one, 
two yarn over and into the circle we are going to place two more double crochets one and two then chain two and another cluster of three double crochets into the circle And that's all that we need to do for our half granny square here. Now for this half design, it's easier if you sew in your end because this stitch was my last one. I've sewn in the end and that will help it because we need that stitch for our, um, you know, for our design. So I'm going to make my slip knot in my second color, insert my hook. And now we need to get started, but of course we haven't got the chain space, so we are going to be using the first stitch here. So just try and go into a sensible place into that chain and make your first double crochet. And then of course, yeah, I went in between, that's fine. Make another two as well. Then here we are making a corner because we have a corner chain space. There we go. One, two chains and then three more double crochets into that same chain space. And then here again, we need to try and find a location. Yeah, there we go. That would be good as much as possible to the side and that's why it was good to sew in that end because otherwise it would just be coming undone and that doesn't work pleasantly there we go see look it's taking shape so now i'm going to be sewing in this end and then we can do the next round or next half round <laughs> So let's get started with the next colour. And again, in that very first one here, often I can't get into there, but I'm just going to go into there a little bit lower and that's fine. Make sure the end doesn't get involved there. and just put your three double crochets in there. So you just need to find a location where you can put those three double crochets on the side in there. Then here, of course, we have a location for a cluster in between these two clusters. Then we make a corner. So really, we're only making one proper corner. Um, we are doing the clusters of a corner here and at the end, but we are not doing the chains. And then we are making the sides. So this design is different from the one that I am using for the underside or the armpit of the sleeve, because there you need a different shape than what you need here. So this is here, that last stitch there that you just need to get yourself into to make those last three double crochets. So this is the half square that you will need to make your neck opening at the front of your cardigan. There we go. So you'll need to make four of those. Now, when you assemble these, make sure you assemble them like this, so you have the mirror image. So make sure that all your squares are facing up, and then you make one with the slanted edge to the right, and one with the slanted edge to the left. Once you made your two front panels, you will need to join them to the back panel. So start by joining the shoulders, as I have indicated here 
on the diagram and then join the sides so there's a dotted line at the top and a dotted line at the bottom join those and then also join the charcoal line at the top and at the bottom these joins are made with an outer loop single crochet this will then give you a sleeveless vest and you will have arm openings ready for your sleeves but before we can make the sleeves, which consist of 16 squares in this configuration, you will also need to make a triangle, or at least for both sleeves, you will need to make two triangles. So let me show you how to go about doing that. So you're going to make your slip knot, insert your hook, and you're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. We're going to go back to the first chain and do a slip stitch to make a little circle. Then you chain two and we are going to place two more double crochets into the little circle. Then you're going to chain two, one, two. Then you place three double crochets into the circle. One, two chains and another three double crochets into the circle. And one, two chains. So now we have three clusters and three chain spaces. Then you go over to that first cluster and you are going to close the round. So really, instead of a square, of course, where we have four clusters, we only need to do three clusters this time because we're making a triangle. So there we go. Let me get the second color. Slip knot, insert your hook. <laughs> and now we are going to do the second round of our triangle. And to be honest, we are going to be doing three corners. And we need to make sure that we have our sides long enough so that it doesn't go in a funny shape. So we're going to do our usual corner of three double crochets, two chains and three double crochets. Now that we've done our first corner, we're going to have to do two chains just to give us a little bit more leeway to get to the next location for our corner. Then we do two chains and then we have enough leeway there to get to that next location. And then we do our corner of three double crochets, two chains and three double crochets. And then you do two chains to get you back to that first double crochet so we can close the round. And as you can see, look, it is turning into a triangle. Now, Everywhere else, we've done three rounds and then the fourth round we joined. But here for this triangle, we don't need that many rounds. So let me show you the third round and then how to join it to the rest of the sleeve. So we make our slip knot, insert your hook and we are going to get started. Let's get started in a corner because then we know where we are. So three double crochets, two chains and three double crochets into that corner chain space. Then we are still going to have to do those two chains, one, two. Then around this chain space, we are going to place a cluster of three double crochets. Then we do our two chains, one, two. This will take us to the corner chain space where we are going to be doing our three double crochets, 
two chains and three double crochets. chain two and a cluster around the chain space. One, two and another corner. And doing this will be big enough for that little sort of space that we need to fill in on our sleeve. And we will be adhering this to the sleeve with a single crochet join. So you will be doing single crochet joints to seam up the sides of the garment and you will also be placing this one into there with a single crochet join on two sides and then the other side will be joined when you join the rest of the sleeve together. So there we go. That's one triangle made. So these are my 15 squares for my sleeve here. This is my 16th square and then here I am now going to join my triangle. So I'm going to join it to this square here like so and then this side is going to go like that and that means we have this kind of shape. And then later on when we sew up the sleeve we will use this as our seam. So let me get started. Always make sure now that you are working on the wrong side of your garment. So this is the right side. So now I have to be working here and I'm going to be starting over here. So I'm going to be going into the chain spaces here, the corner chain spaces to do a single crochet just so I am started. And then I'm going to find the outer loops of my stitches and I'm going to be doing single crochets. So I'm going to be seaming up my whole garment with outer loop single crochets. And this is not completely going to tally up, but that's OK. You're just going to have to make the best of it. So I have gone here, the outer loop, and here around the chain space. This is underneath your arm, so it's not going to be that visible, but it will, um, it will give you a lot of wearing comfort to have that little bit of a armpit in there. Yeah, this is the next one. So just make sure that you space it out so it ends up with the corner tallying up there. Where am I? Yep. One there, yes, why not? I mean, if you can manage to get into the chain to pick up the outer loop, then do that. going around it is fine as well so yeah I've got yeah, that's okay I've got a cluster left here and I've got a cluster left there so that worked out very well indeed So there we go. So that's attached. Now just one more into that chain space. There we go. Voila. And now we start doing, let me show you what I have done. There we go. So this is how it's attached now. And now we're going to attach this lot here. So if you look at the diagram that I tried to uh, draw you, you will see there is like a line here and that is what we are doing now. And so now we are attaching these two corner chain spaces together. And then here the outer loop on this side and the outer loop, or maybe I'll try and get this one of the chain space. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, outer loop, outer loop. Did it split? No. 
outer loop and I'm still on that cluster that's good there we go run here and maybe yeah into there we go so again making sure you can stretch it so it tallies up at the end of the sides so I'm in that corner chain space here and let me just check this one here so yeah I'm just going to go in and do my single crochet and just another one in between the join there for good measure so as you can see now look I've made this sort of contraption <laughs> I've made this shape here this will allow us to have a little bit more space underneath our arm and not have to have a sleeve that is four squares wide because this is the width of my arm opening on my body of my cardigan but we need it just to reduce this so we have an opening that's not too wide for our hands so let me now show you how to join these So now that I have my panel ready here for my sleeve, you're going to fold it with the good sides together, bad sides on the outside, and you're going to be crocheting it together like this. So I have already started here. Let me just show you. So outer loop single crochets. And it should all tally up because of course you've got your clusters the same amount on each square but of course we have that triangle to deal with and just like before we will just make it fit i mean it's only about one stitch out uh, if you count the chains as one location for a stitch so that should be fine to do so then we go over to the next square here and I'm trying to find the first stitch there. There we go. So I will meet you when I'm doing the triangle. So I've made it to my triangle here. I have to put it alongside this square. I'm just going to stretch it out. I'm just going to make an extra stitch or two along these here and it will be fine. So let's see if we can do this. Where is that strand? Let's go in here. That's fine. Then pick up the outer one there as well. I mean, we needed to do this for the comfort of wearing our cardigan. And it just works out. It's fine to do this. It's, you know, designer's privilege, so to speak. <laughs> But yes, I mean, it'll make it much more comfortable. There we go. Yeah, I used two stitches along the chain, so I should be fine. That's two strands. There we go. See, so that's working out nicely. And yes, the triangle didn't have to be bigger because that's all we needed there. And this way it's stretched out nicely for our sleeve to taper down. There we go. Look, see, that's fine. So I'm just going to continue here and then I will show you how to adhere it to the cardigan. So this is now the construction of my tapered sleeve. So as you can see, I've got it narrow here. So there's just three square widths here. But then here we have four square widths. And of course, we need to adhere this to our cardigan with this down so this is going to be the middle of the base there we go and this is going to be at our shoulder seam 
Okay, so it's best to cut off your yarn and now get your cardigan. Let me collect it here. There we are. Make sure everything is inside out. So I still have to do that because I was checking it. So I have my side seams here. I have seamed up three heights of squares. That leaves me two heights. And this is where I'm going to connect these. So let me just make sure that yeah, my base of my cardigan is down. So the base is down here. This needs to be down as well. So this is where I am going to connect again with a outer loop single crochet seam and everything is inside out. Et voila! Look at this. We have a tapered sleeve into the cardigan. But of course, make sure that when you do this, that your arm opening is still open. Okay. There we go. So now you need to do the other one. And to finish my cardigan, I went around all the edges with a half double crochet row. So I did this around the sleeves and also around the neck opening and the base of the square all along the front as well and of course you need to put your buttons on so i've put three buttons on the front of my cardigan i've put them sort of just at the crossroads of the squares there now i have to say i don't undo them often they do undo but i don't undo them often because i uh, am a bit worried about them but that's okay i just put them in put them through the holes here and i just leave them and i wear the cardigan as a sweatshirt so 81 squares Four half squares and two triangles will make you a cardigan. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!